This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York City. Hey everybody, big red letters. That's me, Alex. Small white letters. That's the ramble. That's the name of the program. And we go until midnight tonight. Yes. Uh, here coming from New York City. New York, New York. The city's so nice they named it twice. Or once if you just say New York. Anyway. How are you this evening? Good to see you all. Well, I can't see you, but you can see me. And that's all that really matters, right? Right. That's all that really matters. I never can figure out, am I actually looking in the cameras here? Because here's the problem. Here's the problem with cameras on, uh, on, on Zoom and everything else. The camera is always up on top of the monitor, okay? So it's about up in here. See, it's not, it's not, so even I have to really look up at it and then it looks like I'm looking up, which I am. Now, why don't they come up with some kind of, you know, uh, camera for uh, the internet that is in the middle of your screen, that's somehow behind the screen and you just talk into it and then if I talked into it directly it would look much better than it does now in the old days with television I always knew I looked at the uh, television camera lens like it was a person and then I would just talk right into that lens hard to do here and a lot of times I'm always going like this and I'm always going like that and sometimes I'm not looking and but I want to look directly at you I want to mesmerize you Anyway, listen, I want to talk to you about something. We, uh, we, I keep losing friends, you know. Uh, that's the problem with getting to be 82 years of age, which I don't make any bones about. Actually, I'm 85, but I'm lying about my age. But the, the horrible thing about being 82 is all the people you lose. I mean, all these people go. Even people that you didn't know that were, you were a fan of or whatever, you know. Like yeah, we lost Ronnie Spector, right? Uh, just a couple of days ago and so but also the number of friends that I've lost over the years I was thinking of tonight going through my my contact list and uh, seeing who I can get rid of you know uh, but I I'm, I'm not ready to do that so you know well anyway here's the deal what is the deal okay uh, anyway, the deal is that we lost a, a guy I know, knew uh, and was an acquaintance. I'm not going to say a friend, a good friend, or anything like that. He had a lot of people who do say they were his good friend, and they were. But I knew him, and I liked him, and he did my show a lot, and he came on my show uh, last in 2008 when I was at Sirius XM, which, uh, if you think about it, was, what, I left there eight years ago? Wow, time has passed, hasn't it? Anyway, uh, his name was, uh, uh, was uh, 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 <laughs> oh God, my mind is so screwed these days. His name was Bob Saget. And uh, uh, you know him from things like America's Home Videos, and he also did uh, uh, that, uh, that show uh, but with the family. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now my mind's going blank on everything but anyway uh i the last time i interviewed him was 2008 and uh i put this uh, interview up on my facebook page but a lot of people didn't see it and in case you didn't see it that's why i'm gonna play it for you now it takes about 20 minutes and it's a really good interview and i think it's our way of uh, of paying tribute uh, to bob saget so uh, without further ado here we go. Hey, look who just walked in, folks. It's it's comedy star Bob Saget. <laughs> I'm comedy star. <laughs> it's like a bullwinkle cartoon. With his bits and sketches. I have all my little funny little skits that I do. Yeah. yeah. People up people come up and over the years they always say to comedians, I love your little skits. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They're cute. 
They're adorable. They're, they're, they're adorable. Funny. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And yourself, sir? I'm really good. Yeah. I'm really good. I'm out uh, on the little promo ho thing. But what do you, my... you promo? That was I'm the thing. The... I asked my, asked my, uh, my producer, what, what's he what's he flacking? So what? I could ask you, and he didn't know. I'm, I'm just a, uh, well, it's the Comedy Central roast I where see. they roasted me, and yeah. I survived it. And yeah. I think it's a funny show. It's painful. Uh, for me, where do they do the roast um, out there? Right, it's it, not it, one of it, the friars things. No, it was in L.A. At, and they shot it at Warner Brothers on a soundstage. They made a whole big to do out of it. But how do you do it? How do you do it? Like uh, you know, Comedy Central does not really let four letter words on there. They bleep them. It's a filthy roast. Yeah, they say it's well, one of the that's, dirtiest. That, that's the that was the thing about a roast. Roasts were like the moment in which all these comedians who in the old days had to work clean, right, could go into this little cloistered area called the friars, right. and just tell the Dirtiest jokes known to man, or the maskers, or the, huh? I'm the maskers in horrible a, thing. Uh, the maskers, maskers in L.A. Did you ever? Did you ever hear that thing? It was Jack Benny and George Burns, and it was for yeah, Joe absolutely. E. Lewis. Yeah, and it was uh, a filthy, filthy, horrible thing. And they said things I can't say on here. Yes, you can. Uh, the, <laughs> I believe it was Jack Benny said, uh, or no, George Burns said he uh, Trixie Hicks was trying to ride a Kotex side saddle. <laughs> Uh, that's George Burns. <laughs> that's George Burns. That's the Burns. best thing I ever heard. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, all these guys probably would have worked well dirty. They had no you know? trouble doing it. Jack Benny, you know, Jack Benny cursing was just hilarious. Yeah. Because, you know, I guess that's the joke. Fuck you. Right. You know. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Red Buttons, I was, uh, we'd go to a bunch of roasts years ago, and Red would always get up, and he had a couple standards, which were, he would talk for a while, he'd do a couple jokes, he wasn't cursing, and then he would go... And in case you missed it, fuck. <laughs> just, just say the word. Well, you know, no. those Catskill comics right. were among themselves filthy. Horrible, yeah. I mean, and that's the tradition of the Friars Club in New York. I mean, right. I've gone to a couple of Friars Club dinners, you know, where they get the guys, the old guys, to get up and tell jokes. These are the funny, funniest human beings alive, and nobody knows who they well, are. Well, uh, Bernie Brillstein passed away, and I uh, was at his memorial. He was an agent. For uh, ma- a manager. manager. And, a, and a producer. Produced Ghostbusters, and he was Belushi's manager, so yeah. he was part and parcel of a lot of those projects. But he got them sold, and he also ran Lorimar, the movie company, for a long time. He, um, Norm Crosby spoke mm-hmm. at his, at his uh, memorial, and it was so interesting. He was so funny. And these guys, you know, these are these are old guys, yeah, and there yeah. were a few of the old guys left. Mel Brooks was in the room, and people that just loved Bernie because he was the old school manager type. But the, the those guys are, you know, Don Rickles is um, a friend of mine, and he he uh, he's he just did a thing, actually a tape thing for my roast. But he's there. There there's no one left. There's no it's, one. It's well, go, yeah, it's happening but, quick. It's still there. These guys still at the Friars Club who are mm-hmm. well into their seventies, eighties maybe 90s, right? who get up, and you go, this is the funniest guy I've ever heard in my life. And but nobody, and I can't even remember his name now. Yeah. You know? I went there for lunch. Jeff Ross took me for lunch yeah. there, and it was on my birthday a couple of years ago. And I'm sitting there, and there's a guy, I get a phone call. There's a dial phone next to my table. I pick it up, it, it rings, the guy goes, happy birthday. And I look over, there's a man three feet from me. <laughs> <laughs> with like weird red uh, orange hair, and he must have been ninety. His name was Shecky. <laughs> he looked like a Shecky. His name was Shecky. <laughs> he had he had caramel corn, see through hair. Yeah, yeah. But it was my birthday, and an old man was calling me. He was a comedian. <laughs> at well, the Friars. I, I, I have a friend who belongs to the Friars Club, so I go there a lot for lunch, okay, or or dinner, or whatever the occasion is. And they are that's that. It, it, that uh, the Friars is going to die just because the last member will die. I mean, <laughs> younger comics are not joining. Well, it like that's why, older like comics. Jeff Ross is a friend of mine, and he's a, he he did also the roast on Sunday. And he's trying to get all of us, you know, get come. Let's bring in the new blood. There's you know, to yeah. new blood, you got to clot your blood to eat there. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, yeah, I guess you can have a salad. <laughs> 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 it's a lot about uh, corned beef and stuff, you know. Have, have you ever gone to their uh, their uh, Sunday brunch? No, that's what they oh, tell me about. Oh it. man, that's why they're all dying. <laughs> that's why they're dying. It's I'll every to, fattening, <laughs> artery clogging piece of food you can have. I'll go to Second Avenue Deli. We second that that'll just have the fried chicken skin and then just kill, <laughs> yeah, kill the, myself. The, the Take, Greben they call it. Ugh, a gr- gr- Greben. Greben. And what's greb- grebenus? That's another the same thing. Mm. And then Lipitor. That's the thing that's that it. is the is the big, uh, the major enemy of Greben. <laughs> it's like someone from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah right. Greben and Grebenus <laughs> had a giant war. Greben and Lipitor. <laughs>
yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, well, when we talk about working dirty, all these guys would have loved to have worked dirty, but they couldn't. So they worked clean and they were still hilarious. Well, it's fascinating to me because I idolize those guys. And, that, that, and then I go and have my blue streak, you know. And now... I'm feeling like not being as dirty right now for some reason. Because so. you were, I got to say, <laughs> one of the dirtiest comedians I've ever nuts. seen on stage. I guess I still no. am. And but. when I would tell people that, they go, you mean that guy on Full House? Right. I said, he's the dirtiest guy well, we hung out. in the business I would today. do your show in San Francisco way yeah. before I got a gig, and I would just work all the clubs there, and you were very um, wonderful to comedians. You yeah. had anybody you thought was funny, yeah. which some people didn't even know about. Like, I, I want to do... I'd love to see Jeremy Kramer become something oh, yeah. gigantic. But I nobody mean, even knows where to find him anymore. I think I can find him. He does comedy at a, at a couple of places in really? L.A. He does some There are these stuff. guys, you know, and I, I keep talking, I've mentioned these before. They're these guys who uh, are uh, what we call the comedian's comedians. Yeah. These are the guys, everybody goes, Jeremy Kramer. Everybody in the business knows Jeremy Kramer. Yeah. Anybody in this audience know Jeremy Kramer? Probably not. Right. And yet he's probably one of the funniest guys around. He did. I did a couple and, things with him. And I think that comedian's comedian paralyzes people. I think it the does. room gets too small. You need to. Yeah, you need yeah. to open it up. Yeah, yeah. Because you're trying to make just your your friends laugh, your peers laugh, because you love well, comedy you figure, so much. You and, figure if your peers are laughing, it should all be offered to you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know it as well as anybody else. You can be the greatest comedian in the world, but if you don't have the eye of the tiger, if you don't go out and get this thing, and you have to, yeah. you have to get the, the audience has to love what you're doing. Yeah. That's the weirdest part because yeah. it's not it's not party of one. It's you know, and I that's why sometimes I'll do things. That was for them. This is for me. Yeah. This is for my friends. You know, and I'll work as quick as I can to do a little bit of everything for everybody, which may not be the right. Yeah. You know, just that's how I am. You know. But then I'll look at someone like the the greatest. You know, George Carlin that, that yeah. ever lived. One of them, and um, he did what he did, and they found him, and and you know. I, I'm, yeah, but they very seldom find them. In fact, these comedians, comedians, for the most part, never get heard from. One of them that did okay, and I, we can't still can't figure out why, is Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah. I mean, Gilbert. Gil Gilbert did the roast. It, it was astonishing to watch. He's become his own. He's the mini, funniest human being on the planet. It's an so enigma. I've spent three New Year's Eves in a row with Gilbert Gottfried. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I got to tell you, they were mem memorable. You don't need fireworks. His I don't voice need is louder. No. What's amazing is when he did the roast, he went uh, last. He was right before I went up to do my rebuttal. And he, um, the moment he takes the, the stage, the moment he yeah. got to the podium, um, we're all gone. All the comedians are gone. And this, are, you know, it was Jim Norton and Norm MacDonald. It was a hardcore dais. And, yeah. Uh, Jeff Garland and all, a lot of people you like, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, Susie Essman. I mean, we, 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 the moment he filthiest woman working. She's so business. funny. She's so. She's funny. A, in case people don't know who we're talking about. She's on Curb Your Enthusiasm and plays Jeff Garland's wife. Right. Really, the bitch and of all bitches. She was so. She hated Larry David on the show. And yeah. She actually said on on stage uh, during the roast that she saw my girlfriend. As one thing we're sure about her, she's not a star fucker. <laughs> 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 Everything was designed to ruin me as a human being. Well, that's what roasts are supposed to do. It, it did it, and and Gilbert went last, and it was um, we were all, it, it, for a lot of us. It's just an aha moment because he started with something which I won't say because I don't want to ruin it, you know, totally. Because he um, yeah he just kept saying it over and over again. I could say it. He said that I did not um, that my name uh, I hate saying my own name that I did not um, uh, rape and kill a girl in 1990. And he repeated it probably about eight times. And, and if you have any proof, unless you have proof <laughs> that he and it, it's pretty amazing. I think it's on the the uh, Comedy Central. But website. he is one of those people that was a comedian's comedian. Yeah, and he made it. Yeah, because it, he did a lot of great voiceover work too, which is yeah. great. You know, he yeah. was the parrot and Aladdin and all yeah. that, and Amflack yeah. or whatever. He does birds. He's basically birds. He is a bird. Yeah, he so is. A he's bird. a squinty little bird, and he is. Just hilarious, and uh, he 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 blew the roof off. It was at, it was I think Aristocrats yeah. when they showed that clip from the Hugh Hefner roast yeah. that couldn't be on the air because it was insane. He's 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 got that medium down. He's got that medium shot on television. Yeah, he's got it. Down. This was the perfect uh, place for him to to do. What one he did. one New Year's, uh, I uh, uh, he, every time I see Gilbert, I can he he can be walking across the street. I'll hear this voice yell, 
Alex Bennett, you still alive? <laughs> and I get this constantly from him. And finally, we're to, we're to party with Soupy Sales, who is not oh. in good shape these days. Oh. Right? Right. And he looks at me and he goes, is he still alive? <laughs> Anyway, so this is Bob Saget, uh, and he, you see, you're working clean. No, what happened to you? No, I'm actually I'm I'm doing my HBO special that I had uh, last year was was pretty blue, mm. and uh, I'm just bored with, with dropping the f bomb right now. But you you know you kind I of, can't stop yeah, myself. Let me, let me, I mean I can't. But also there's another it. there's another good reason for you to do it, and that is you worked all those years. You know, you, uh, look. Uh, nobody blames you for taking jobs. Right. Right? Because the idea is to work. Right. Right? And, and so I you, did them to the best of my ability, so given took, that position. You, you took, uh, you took uh, a sitcom, <laughs> right. which is, I guess, considered a treacly sitcom. It's, it'll, it, it'll be treacling forever. Yeah. Uh, full House. <laughs> right. You know, and, and you, you were portrayed as that sweet little Bob Saget. It's unbelievable. You know, with those two lovable Olsen twins, who you raised, by the way, kind into well, two fine women, by the way. Well, I like them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and and uh, uh, the um, uh, you, you, so you had that reputation. And of course, you did America's Funniest Home I did Videos. That, right? right. And, you know, so you're Mr. Clean, clean. And somehow you I know, got a lot of code in. If you watch the video show and you watch the reruns of me, yeah. even though I look like a scrubbing bubble. Yeah. I still would say things like uh, here's co- these videos are going to spew right into your face. And I was talking porn. Yeah. But yeah, the people didn't. If you do the minutes of it, you'll go. What? 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 Right. But still, you were looked upon as Mr. S- All over the world. Those sweet shows. Guy. Rat and as and the clean your thing. act was the opposite. Always. Yeah. You know, and and uh, and a wonderful act, by the way. Thank you. Uh you even wrote songs. That you yes, and I still do. I, my, my HBO special, I sang uh, My Dog Licked My Balls. It's a very <laughs> popular song. The college kids sing it with me in unison, and they do. And they, but, they, but did you feel it was important for you to do that, to say to people, look, I'm not just that squeaky clean. You know, that's what I do for a living. This is what I do as an act. The truth of it is, and I've obviously, because I've had to think about it, because people ask me it, I I didn't put thought into it. I just went on stage. What I, I guess what I thought when I was a uh, when the Full House and the video show ended, I tried to do some directing stuff and love directing. Well, so I want to ask you about that. You directed and wrote a film, right? I directed a movie, a TV movie called For Hope. Uh, about my I, I didn't write it. Susan Rice wrote it. I exec produced it and directed it, um, and it was about my sister dying of this disease, scleroderma. Yeah. And then uh, a couple years later, I directed the feature Dirty Work with Norm Macdonald and Artie Lang and a lot which of which I which people. I saw and I liked. I Thank you. It was terrific. Thank you. It did not uh, do that well. So, no, because I couldn't even remember the name. Right, of it. college kids now love it; they revere it. It's up there with Half Baked and those other ones that yeah. n- maybe didn't make a fortune that weekend, but uh, they, it is lived. And then um, I've done some others. A couple of years ago, I did this Farce of the Penguins thing, which was a takeoff on March of the Penguins, and yeah. Sam Jackson narrated. It was filthy, you know, stock footage of penguins. It was what it was. Yeah, it looked, footage looked like ass, you know, because it was. It was from nowhere. Well, there's nothing beats a penguin saying dirty it's the hottest things. thing in the world. Gilbert, of course, was one of the funniest. Gilbert and Sam Jackson yelling at each other. Um, he says, I'm freezing my nuts off. And Sam Jackson says, you don't have nuts. And Gilbert says, fuck you. And Sam Jackson says, fuck you, you nutless motherfucker. <laughs> so it's a good discourse. It's a good discourse. And so then, uh, and now I'm doing another I'm doing another sitcom as an actor that I like. That I'm, that I'm, I did a Broadway play here last, uh, end of the year, I did Drowsy in, Chaperone. Yeah, you're in Drowsy Chaperone. And so I'm, and you know, I, <laughs> friends of mine go, you know, you do a lot of things, none of them well. <laughs> you know, just dabble in all the little things you like to do, Bob. But I, I, I am going back into a, um, I'm going to always do my stand-up. Well, that must have been scary, though. It was the first uh, couple nights, but after opening night, when people told me that it went great, and, and no one ran after me with pitchforks, I realized that. It yeah, was one still, of the greatest experiences. It's got to be scary because that's not what you do for a living. But I did, a, I did theater. I did an off-Broadway play here a few years okay. ago called Privilege, a Paul yeah. White's play. And yeah, that was one of the best experiences I ever had. I love acting a lot. And, yeah, and I, I get very fruity when it comes to the uh, thespian world. And then I and Drowsy Chaperone was, I think, one of the best things I've ever d- experienced. I, I love in, in in. Well, you in certainly acting. probably grew from the experience. It was incredible. Yeah, and, and, and it gave me less fear about anything. You know, because if you're in front of 1,600 people a show, eight shows a week. Well, you know what's different? You know what's different about theater than anything else? You're taking something which as a whole is like a movie on stage. Okay, you're telling a story, you're acting and everything. And then when you're through with it, you got to go do it again. Yeah. 
And again. And you get to try to and do again, it right. And again. And again. And then you have a good one, and then you go, how do I replicate that? Yeah. So how many how many months did you do that? I did it from October 18th or 19th. October 19th, I started. Um, and then I, we closed December 30th, 30, 31st. Yeah. We closed New Year's Eve, I believe. And but it was by it the was end, you, probably most actors start going a little nutty if they keep doing the same play. I was nutty from the word go because I it was uh, Bob Martin wrote this play. Yeah. And uh, it was the guy's on stage the whole time. He takes a pee break in the intermission. This man in chair character in this yeah. play. And um, so you're on you're on the whole time. And, and I really got into it and it drove me a little nuts to learn it in two weeks i only had two weeks yeah. to rehearse it so yeah it was it was a pretty remarkable experience we're talking with bob saget uh the um uh, so you raised the olsen twins <laughs> their parents raised them i i just uh, was with them for eight years yeah and then uh, we're friends we're literally are friends and so i see them well, how could you not have worked that long at that age with them and not have them feel some kind of you're right, right. if that if that didn't exist there would be a problem I, actually there was a party last week at jeff franklin's house the exec producer that, that wrote the show full mm-hmm. house and uh, and and ashley and mary kate weren't there but um uh john dave uh Coulier, stamos Lori lachlan uh, Jody Sweeten wasn't there either. She mm-hmm. had to work, but Candace Cameron, Beret. How, how many years that series? It was eight. It was really like seven, and, and then a thirteen from one season. So it's eight, eight seasons total. If, if you do eight seasons of a series. Can't you pretty well write your check for the rest of your life if you save your money? Because yeah. you don't own it. People all think that no, you don't get, own it, but you get you get residuals. Residuals are nothing. People, but unless you have ownership or points in a show, which I did not, which yeah. um, uh, you don't. Uh, you get seven dollars. You know, you get like checks for nothing. It's it, it turns. You get into, writers cramped from signing all the checks. It's funny. I mean, actually, I watched uh, Conan a couple of ni- last week, and Kevin Costner was on there, and he showed his, you know, Field of Dreams, The Untouchables. You know, seventeen dollars, six dollars, five dollars, and that is just what happens. I actually have gotten checks for for uh, three dollars. Right. That's yeah. what happens. I've gotten th- eighty-five cents from Full House <laughs> from an airing. <laughs> really? Yeah, and it's like you know Istanbul. You know, it third wasn't, run. Wasn't worth it to send it to you, was it? Uh, it's all funny because then what, well, it's what, like uh, that episode of Seinfeld where he gets writers cramp from signing all those checks from from Japan for right. the opening of some show. That's what it is, and it's not. It he's not tired of signing the checks from Seinfeld, however. He does not have to sign them, I don't think, because he owns the show. He part does. Of it, part he of does. It. He he uh, as he should. I always believe in yeah. ownership. Yeah, so Ownership's you're doing a you're doing thing. a new series. Doing a new series. Do you own any of this one? Stupid. Not allowed to talk about it, but uh, <laughs> we don't talk about it till the ink's dry. But I I am very happy. Things are good, and especially in this economy, in this okay, world, well, I, and well, I get well, to work. How's, how's this different than any other? Uh, it is. Uh, it's uh, it's called Surviving Suburbia, and yeah. it's it's about a guy that doesn't really. It's by Kevin Abbott, who's a very good writer. He worked on Roseanne and a bunch of the people wrote on Mad About You and it's about you know relationships it's a guy who lives with his wife and he's married to her because she's his wife and he's got a 17 year old son and an 8 year old daughter and he doesn't he loves them but he doesn't really like them very much and he doesn't really like his neighborhood he doesn't really like people he doesn't really want to talk to anybody and a, a guy and his 17 year old daughter move in next door and he's attracted to her which is the conflict in the pilot is that he No, is this, this a series for network or for This is for the CW who are doing a really interesting uh new palette uh, a whole night owned by a company called MRC. So it's this it's a new kind of CW's uh, model. doing pretty well with Gossip Girl and Yep, uh, and the 90210 is coming on and yeah. uh, so we will be on 7:30 on Sunday nights and we've got an order for thir- that's a, that's 13. It's a little little dicey for regular TV. Isn't it is. It? All I, of the shows know. on that Sunday will all be like that. They'll be kind of I think a little more male oriented. They're they're trying to But I mean new. having the idea of somebody being hot for a 17 year yeah. old next door neighbor. That, and and is, it's written by Kevin Abbott who is kind of trying to bring himself out uh and not and he's married happily and he's got his kids and he's kind of doing his own life he's making his own yeah you know autobiographical i hope my family doesn't kill me for doing this show so yeah. and and it it reads really well i'm i'm very excited about it cuz i i'm get to be in it you know and at, at, from start to finish Good and we're luck doing on that. thank you i, I yeah. think you you might like it if we do it the way we're trying to do it yeah it's it's a guy that's just not he does not really enjoy he looks at people and goes like he sees them he, it opens with him urinating on his property, and a, a woman goes by in a little. She's a, overweight, and she's in a cart walking her dog. She's in a little motorized cart scooter. Yeah. And he turns to his wife and he goes, "You know, that that's just not right." 
you know that yeah. that shouldn't she shouldn't be you don't walk your dog the purpose of walking your dog is walking your dog you don't do that <laughs> so it's, he's disgruntled <laughs> which i i find amusing because yeah. at a certain point well, i'm 52 that's you, that's you. yeah it, it, we i'm i'm both you know i'm i'm a, i'm a, i'd like to think i'm a kind person but I also enjoy looking at something and saying irreverent things about it. And what's happening with one or one hundred? That's gone. That's gone. I it was like a hit show. show. I like that show. Thank you. It was a hit. It's good that it's they say it's good to leave. one of those nitwit game shows that was interesting. Thanks. Yeah, they they uh, the NBC people didn't um, want to bring it back, and I, I you know they figure out what they want to do. And I mean, I can, I can never understand why Deal or No Deal is a hit. I mean, it's just it's. it's, a, it's, it's Huh? It's an homage to how good Howie is at that thing. Yeah, that's a, and the the producer yeah, nice. and how how sane he is that he isn't blowing his brains out from doing it week yeah. after week. And there's a guy named Scott St. John who also exec produced uh, uh, One Versus One Hundred. Really good guy. And yeah. uh, Endemol runs a really good show. They they did a great it's job. A, it's a great show you had there. Yeah, right. it was. A, it's a. I would have done it. If, I would have liked to have done it if they kept going. The roast is censored, but uh, kind of uncensored. It's it's ninety minutes long yeah. and it's. Really filthy. No matter how you bleep it, it's filthy. Well, I've always kn- I've known you for years. I've always admired your work, and oh. I've always liked you as a friend. Same and, here. And uh, thank uh, you. Anytime you want a little airtime, yeah, we're here. We are. You know where we are. We're here thank at you. one I'll... of the world's largest broadcasting organizations. It's finally happened. <laughs> I will come here until until we both decompose. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> okay, it's Bob Saget, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Saget, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Saget, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you. Oh, really? Is that, <laughs> is that, ladies and gentlemen? Is that, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, well, okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll buy that it, uh, <laughs> that it ended that way. Anyway, uh, that's Bob Saget. And, uh, you know, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him. Nice guy. Nice guy. I don't know that I would have ever met up with him again, you know, but uh, I I'm, I'm feel privileged that I did. You know, and that's good. That's really good. Well, there are only two people waiting to come on. Well, now it's three people waiting to come on. So we'll uh, we'll uh, go to our uh, our our uh, Zoom panel, and if you want to Zoom panel us, uh, uh, well, uh, here we go. Um, uh, uh, Alan, tell them how they can Zoom panel and be part of this right here. Go, go to gabnet.com gabnet.net i don't know what how oh yeah you're really a lot of help i just click on the uh, uh, browser yeah. and it takes me there it's ask charlie he's he's yeah. more awake okay charlie that. how do you call this program you go to gabnet.net and click on the button that, that says zoom it says zoom okay see it's that simple, folks. I was half right. I mean, you're half right. Is gabnet.com, gabnet.net, one of those. Yeah. So Don't I, go to gabnet.com. As a matter of fact, if you want to do something really nice, buy the buy the domain and give it to Alex. Give it to Alex, yeah. 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 Well, I doubt if that's going to happen. You know. But anyway, I you know what I was doing? I was uh, I was looking through my uh, contacts. Uh, here, I wonder if I could do this. Hold on a second. This may pop up on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want it to, but it's going to. Uh, let me see here. Where do I have my contacts? Uh, where's my contact? They're on your eyes. I'm looking for my contact book. Oh yeah, they're on your eyes. Very funny. Very funny. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I, I, oh, oh, there it is. Okay. Now, th- this is going to pop up here. Uh, it's going to pop up on the screen. Let me get it out of there. Okay. Uh, well, I don't want to do this because it's going to show up phone numbers. Um, no, don't show phone numbers. No, I don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, because I wish there were a way that I could just, you see, I mean, here I have a list of people, right, in my contacts. And I was looking, I had to go, go through them the other day, right? Uh, because uh, I got a new thing and it said okay we want who do you want on your contact list so i went through my contacts and i said who and um uh it it it, um i started getting all these names and i'm going well a lot of these people i don't even talk to you know and then i started coming up on somewhere it was well he's dead and she's dead and he's dead and i don't know if he's dead (laughs) 
know. I mean, like, yeah. um, uh, let me see here. Here on a page, right? Bruce David. He's been dead for five years now, six years, and I still have him in my phone list. And I have no idea why I keep him there. Do you do you have the same problem? Yeah, I got at least four people on my phone list that I don't have the heart to go through there and delete them. Here's one for you, Heidi Fleiss. Oh yeah, she's wow. dead though. Yeah, yeah. The what's it called, madam? Yeah, madam. Yeah. Yep, she's dead. Uh, I got. Uh, let's see, Gilbert Gottfried. Is he still alive? <laughs> yes, Gilbert still alive. Okay. <laughs> People who listen to the show know the joke I just made. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me um, uh, uh, let Tony Magno in here. Uh, let me see here. Dennis Hoff. Yeah, dead. he passed away. Dead. Yeah. dead. Um, Irv Jackson is he still alive? Uh, oh no, that's <laughs> he's, he's using the name Jack Bishop. Barely. Let me see. He's using the name Jack Bishop. Let me see here. <laughs> Speaking of Dennis Hoff, is the Bunny Ranch still in, in operation? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Listen, whorehouses don't go out of business. Oh, uh, I didn't know it was his Look, thing. Sirius XM is still there. You know, Social so. distancing at the Hula House. What do they do, Alex? <laughs> Six feet apart. Boy, I wish I were. Oh, nobody's that big. <laughs> Tony Magno. I got two okay, cups of coffee. I, I, I wonder if this number is. Oh, all I have is an email address. I don't have a phone number. Okay. Lucky oh, I can give you my cell number. I'm open for calls. You want to chat later? I'll be up till three. No, 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 no. Don't, don't ever, don't. I won't ever call you. I'll make you a deal. I won't call you. You don't call me. Okay. Um, All right, that, that works. Let me see here. I, I, there were a lot of people who were dead, and I, uh, I'm just not seeing them now. Uh, I wonder why. Well, no, I maybe I'm dead, and I'm going through these. I don't know. <laughs> You got a lot of old bits uh, in the thing. I have my mother's old address book, right? Yeah. Well, I can't, I can't find any right now, but you know, a lot of a lot of dead people in here, and uh, I uh, I just wonder. I, I, you say you don't get rid of them, right? Uh, right, Charlie? No, I don't. How no. about the rest of you? How many of you have people you know who are dead or are still in your contact list? Yeah. Meaning in my in my phone book, like? Yeah. Yeah, contacts. So yeah, I, know, yeah, I mean, I have my mom's old address book, and I know people are gone in there, but no, I'll, like, no, I'll no, still no, no, I'll no, leave no, it. But yeah. you see, it's not going to happen to you because you're how old now? You're 51, something like that? Two, but who knows with me? I've already got myself in the box of two weeks ago. <laughs> I remember with the urology. Well, no, but I had to go back. You know what but I'm you saying. never know, though. You never know. What? She doesn't want me and mama. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Anyway, says about, Heidi Fleiss is still alive. Oh, really? God, you okay. better not come back to get me, Alex. She's well. in your phone book, Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> I should call. Yeah. Uh, I should no, call. one of the people in the chat room said that she was still alive. I just Googled her. She's still alive. Didn't she go to jail? I thought or no. Well, yeah, I mean, she had her problems, yeah. but... Uh, she, um, uh, she, you know, she, I, I, I knew her through uh, Dennis Hoff. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and uh, they were good friends, and she used to have a place down the road, you know. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, from him. Oh, from uh, him? I was going to say, yeah. nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how about you, uh, 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 Trucker Steve? Hello there, by the way. How you feeling? Good. Good? Great. Um, I'm wearing glasses now because my eyesight's starting to go a little bit. Yeah, well, mine oh, mine was Welcome good. Mine, mine had gotten good after I got a uh, uh, what do you call it? What do they put cataract there? Cataract surgery. Cataract surgery. Yeah. And then I had the eye lifted thing, and now I'm blind as a bat. I've got to use glasses <laughs> it's again. Now. I'm feeling get better vision. Well, do you, you know why? Why I think it happened? Why I'm having a hard time seeing is that when it only went down, it went down in my lids to about half my pupil. It's kind of like you're always wincing like this. And if you do yeah. that, you can read better. Okay. So now okay. that my eyes are open completely, I got nothing but troubles. Plus, yeah. plus again, the medicine affects my eyesight too. Okay. So, yeah. You know, but what the hell? Uh, so you, but you're feeling, you're feeling okay there. I try to see, I'm not going to say to you, are you feeling better? Because you won't yeah, feel I'm better. Okay. But yeah. Any word on a, on a kidney transplant? Um, I did uh, go through um, 
a few steps to get closer mm -hmm. to getting on the list. I have a cardiogram February 2nd, and then after that, I have an ultrasound mm -hmm. in April. An ultrasound of what? Your kidneys? I, I, I guess, you know, my whole... Yeah, well, the ultrasound, they usually do on a particular organ. I know I've had ultrasounds of my kidneys. Yeah, so have I. Yeah. And uh, I, I did, um, any, are your kidneys okay, Alan? Yeah. I have cysts in my kidneys. Oh. Yeah. And you got something to brag about now. Yeah. Brag about. Yeah. yeah. But the, 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 they gave me a, a sonogram for that, truckers. <coughs> so, yeah. Are you, are you missing trucking? Yeah. Not really. Not really. <laughs> You're beginning to realize how difficult it was on you all those years. Yeah. Well, the drivers up here in Canada are getting ready to strike because um, of the vaccine mandates mm -hmm. that they've, uh, their government is now imposing is going to start uh, in just a few days. Um, Trudeau actually yesterday said he was going to cancel it. And then he flipped again, Mr. Flip Flopper. Um, <laughs> and he is, is imposing it again. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sounds like Donald Trump. Well, no, what I'm saying is, is that, but, uh, you know, I mean, uh, you can have a hundred or more people now in a company and not have to get, oh, no, that's the Supreme Court ruling. You don't yeah. have that up there in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. yeah here, he's even, uh, Trudeau is even considering suspending our charter and rights and freedoms for five years from what I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but if he does that, he's fucking done. What do you mean rights and freedoms? Our version of your constitution. Oh. Well, why he, can he suspend it? There is a clause in it that he can. For public health. All the sure. notwithstanding clause. Hmm. Okay. Didn't right. Donald Trump try that? I don't know that he tried it, but if he had had a chance, he would have. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't, I've, I've heard this online. I don't know whether it's true. It could be just bullshit. Mm -hmm. I've tried doing some research on, like, on reputable news sites, and I found nothing on it. Well, then it's probably, like, just fake stuff on the, you know, yeah. Fake, yeah. fake internet. That's what I'm thinking you now. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, well, yeah, good. Well, I'm glad to see that you're, it's nice seeing you every now and then. So we know that you're still, you're okay. You know, how many days a week you get in the, uh, the, uh, blood exchange, the, uh, three, three, three a week. Okay. Um, and how long does that take each time now? Three hours, four hours. Yeah. Yeah. Usually. Yeah. Yeah. That's the worst. I think that's the worst part about it, but at least it makes you have time to just do other stuff. What do you do when you're getting your, uh, what's it called again? Um, see, my mind's gone. It's dialysis. Gone. Dialysis. 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 Uh, when you have the di get the dialysis, what, what do you do for that period of time, the three hours or the two watch hours or whatever? Get on the internet. Huh? They usually watch TV, get on the internet, you know. What do you do, uh, Trucker Steve? Huh? Hey, we we were asking you what you do when you're getting dialysis. Uh, watch TV, scroll through my phone. No, oh, okay. Maybe you, mm -hmm. does the time pass faster now that you've been doing it for a while? Yeah, I'm uh, doing it four hours now, so it gets boring. But mm -hmm. uh, they gave us a letter today that. Uh, because of COVID and all this Omicron BS, they're considering cutting uh, dialysis days down for the patients, probably mm. from three to two. Oh man, that's not good. Mm -mm. Yeah, so I'm worried about that. Wow. What that's gonna do to me. I would be That's because these idiots won't get vaccinated. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, that's why we keep having these variants. Why? Could have wiped it out like like smallpox. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, hey, listen, I got a solution to a problem I came up with today. Now, what's a, what's the second biggest problem in this country? If it isn't COVID, what is it? Trump, mm. Republican Party. No, well, I mean, same difference. <laughs> that goes without saying. That's a given. Okay, but oh. what 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 is the other big problem? In fact, one that I think if if uh, if our Congress shifts a bit in the midterms, it's going to be because of this issue. Ooh. And it's not COVID. It's not COVID. About gun violence? No. No. Voting. No, not voting rights. People are too dumb to really care to be that worried about voting <laughs> rights. Okay. Yeah. To begin with, you got to find enough people who vote in the first place. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest thing going on is the way thing the the cost of things at the at the grocery store and mm -hmm. everywhere Please. else. Yeah. Okay. It's the supply chain issue. The supply chain issue. The fact that you go into a the supermarket and it ain't quite so super anymore. There are like five things on the shelves and I'm you're sticking all... things in my pants now on the way out. I'm joking. <laughs> no. Yeah, well there's a lot I've of room. There's, that there's a lot there. from what I hear there's a lot of room in there, Tony. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh Alan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, 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 it, but no, it's the supply chain, I mean, and one of the biggest reasons for it is they can't get enough truck drivers. You truck were talking about yeah. it last night, Kevin. Well, see, if you that's want... why the truck drivers are pissed off up here. It's because they're going to be, the ones who are not vaccinated are not going to be allowed to cross the border anymore. Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's going to hurt the supply chain issue even more. Yeah, because you're taking twenty five percent of the trucks off the road. Okay, well, I have a an, an answer to our problem, and I don't know why Biden hasn't thought of this one. But what I would do is, I mean, obviously, the reason why they are having trouble with trucking is because there are truckers who just have stopped trucking. Okay, and and there's a there's a a. a what can we call it? A, a scarce supply of drivers now, right. and a, there's always been a shortage. Well, here's my answer to it. For the time being, why can't he call this a national emergency and oh. call out the army and the air the force national and what of the national guard and have them drive the trucks? I'm sure among them there are enough people who know how to drive trucks. Probably. Well, you're going, no, Kevin, but think about it. I mean, a lot of people in the military are assigned to trucking. Yeah, it depends on what you know? size trucks they have. Yeah, but I think that if we were to call out the uh, the National Guard and the, uh, and the Army and so on and have them start driving trucks and, and saying to the companies, well, listen, you're not going to make a profit out of this or you're just going to get paid for the use of your truck, okay? Uh, and and literally hijack these trucks and go back and forth using getting them moving again using the military to move them. Well, how is that a bad idea? It can't hurt everybody. The more trucks on well, the road, I mean, it could, it could hurt in some way, you know, especially if they're bad drivers. Mm -hmm. But but I would say we so. have two I truck drivers here. One who was a truck driver and another one formerly was a truck driver. What, where is that a bad idea? Just a matter of whether they're licensed to, to pull a semi or not. You know, a lot of the trucks in the military are smaller. Yeah. And it, they do have some tractor trailers, but they do have tractor trailers. It's a matter of whether they're licensed, you know, to that to that to a to a full semi or not. And it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, it's a way of solving the problem. And getting foods back. It's food the same back thing as yeah. It's the same thing as what they would do with any other big problem. And because this food isn't getting to the stores, how much of it is starting to go stale? I just don't think it's that big of a problem yet. You don't think it's that big a problem yet? I haven't. You Not know, yet. I haven't seen my no, my grocery store isn't empty. You know. No, but I was in Safeway the other day, and a lot of the cases were empty. I don't know if it's because of that, but a lot of the cases, you know, the frozen cases were empty. They're blaming it on that. It could be. Yeah. Well, I um, we just got our new uh, stove today, our new oven. 
Oh, it came in. Okay. Yeah, which yeah. incident? Did it have food in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, uh, this oven uh, works with my um, uh, Alexa. Oh, you can do voice? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I push a button that says remote, and then I can have it do all the things I want to tell to, uh, you know, so, uh, Alexa, I'll say. Um, uh, turn on the oven to 345 degrees. Oh, nice. And I look over at the oven, and it goes to 345 oh, wow. degrees. That is pretty cool. I have Everything hooks up to Alexa now. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, the thing I don't like about it is you have to turn the feature on on the oven. Oh. You, it doesn't just automatically do it to the oven. You have to turn it on. And then it's called remote Wi-Fi. And then you just, uh, I could do it from here. I could do it. I could be in Paris and turn on my oven. You know, cook a meal on the only way home from the plane. And then this, this thing is also a convection oven, as oh, well. Really? Yeah, I, like I mean, the all these here. features that have been put into it for the same price it used to cost 15, 20 years ago. You know, plus you got the Wi-Fi, and uh, you know, it really it's it, it's really nice. You know, so I'm 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 happy we got it. Next, we need a new refrigerator. I think I'll do a GoFundMe for a refrigerator. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, what? Get the one with the big freezer that pulls out. I like looking at them in uh, like uh, PC Richards. You pull it out, you can put a lot of food in it. You know, those yeah. big super ones. Yeah, we got this from PC Richards, this thing. Yeah. That's what we do. I usually go, me and my brother usually get our stuff from Well, the, here's yeah. the thing. I got it from PC Richards because they haul it away. If you pay him, yeah, if you pay him thirty yeah, bucks, if you pay him thirty bucks, they haul it, the old one away, and I don't know what I'm going to do with two ovens in my kitchen. I thought the super was going to take. Well, it. wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. So I, I, uh, the, the super comes up yesterday to disconnect everything. So when they come, they, you know, they can just take the old one away. And he says, "Oh, forget oh. it. I'll take the old one." And he took the old stove away because he sells it to a guy for scrap and makes a few bucks himself. And so uh, from here on in, I'm, you know, if I, if I get rid of my refrigerator, I'm going to ask him first, uh, would you disband, uh, do away with the, uh, with the refrigerator for me? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, but he, uh, he hooked this. Well, I'd have to have him hook up the, the uh, refrigerator because it's got water and stuff that goes into it and so on. But he did the whole thing, you know, he just, uh, and I, I threw him 60 bucks for doing it because I, you know, I like to keep him happy. I like bribing him. You know? yeah, last time I got a washer and dryer, the guy that delivered mm -hmm. the washer and dryer picked yeah. up the old one. Yeah. So anyway, and uh, then uh, the big news today also is that we're writing checks. Uh, first to the guy that we're that's letting us have the apartment because we're, you know, I hate to do it because he's already making enough money from having won the case. All right. This is my washer dryer. <laughs> I'm on to another subject already. Oh, sorry. It took me a minute to get it down. Sorry. Uh, and, How long and, does it take? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know. It depends on how wet the dryer, the washer is, I guess. Anyway, uh, so, uh, and then we have to send out our first checks for the, uh, for the rent. Okay. Oh. So you're and, actually and, have to pay rent. Well, right? here's the thing. Yeah, we have to pay rent. And uh, um, Marjorie and I were, were arguing. We have to pay three months because we've already been here three months from when the thing was going to be signed. Okay? Wow. So we owe three months rent. And uh, we also owe a security deposit. So that comes to a total of $2,000. Better start a GoFundMe for that. Yeah, I better too. start a GoFundMe for that. And I pay for half of it, and Marjorie pays for half of it. So I have to pay $250 a month. And where I'm going to get that money, I have absolutely no idea. That, however, I have to put 300 away because it might turn out when they go to the appeals court that it'll come out to uh, 800 a month. Yeah, I, I really don't know if I can afford $400 a month for rent for my portion of it. I I may have to just have Marjorie go out and get a second job. 
That would be funny. God, you lazy. I mean, this is hilarious, right? Delivery. That's a nice apartment for that price. So we had to fork out to this guy who had the apartment, seventy-five grand. But if you put, if you prorate that over how many years? Eight years? Nine years? At least eight years. Yeah. Uh, per month, that's less than a thousand dollars a month. You know, so nice. we uh, we we did that. And uh, then and, and then we're we're doing this, and it's I still think we're getting away great, you know. So yeah. we're really happy with that. Hello, Mr. Neary. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. How's how's uh, how's Adrian? She's good. Yeah, she has like this. Uh, she has two dances for competition that she's in in two weeks in mm -hmm. santa clara mm -hmm. and then they have a recital after that so she has like six dances she's doing for that what kind of yeah. dancing she's six years old I know. what <laughs> kind of no what kind of dancing just well starting. well what kind of dancing well there's this stripper pole not yet no, <laughs> <laughs> no she has a she has a jazz she has ballet she has tap she has hip-hop and then she has competition two classes so yeah so, so great. and she tap dances yeah i tap dance oh, i took tap dancing. tap dancing i took tap Ooh. i studied tap dancing really yeah i have a mean waltz clog but it's the only thing i have here's what happened my parents decided hey be nice if i did something and they tr kept trying to teach me instruments, and I was too lazy for that. My father was a violinist, but they wanted me to play something. I went through, let's see here. I went through violin. That was really fast, which my father played. Then uh, trombone. Uh, that one was, uh, was really boring, except for the fact that I got uh, wedded to the idea that if I blew into that thing enough, I could use the spit valve you know the spit valve on a trombone? And then you can unload all your spit. <laughs> so I would play it just enough to get enough spit in the spit valve. And then, let's say I taught myself a little bit of piano. But at a certain point, my parents said, why don't we send them for tap dancing lessons? Uh. So they got me a pair of tap shoes. Now, you know, to begin with, I'm, I got to tell you, when you're a kid and you got other kids around you, and you got guys in the schoolyard, they're not going to be too nice to the tap dancer. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. the tap what do you do? You? What do you do? You play basketball, oh. baseball, you, uh, hockey? What do you do? I uh, tap dance. What are you, queer or something? That's what I used <laughs> to get. So anyway, I went and took tap dancing lessons. I think I took six lessons long enough to learn the waltz clog, which I can still do to this very day. <clears throat> she uh she did the christmas party thing she had two songs she did that there mm -hmm. and she is now addicted to the stage oh, good. oh no she, no kidding i've seen that kid i know you she's know kid, i know but she's usually shy now she's like i want to be on stage all the time daddy so. i mean all and the yeah, world in her opinion all the world's a stage and we're merely your stupid audience yeah yeah <laughs> so and then actually Stephanie's doing really good. She she had elective as drama, which she did not want. And now she's in advanced drama second year and they're doing a big the James and the big giant peach or whatever, you know. That, mm -hmm. that, so yeah. So they're they're getting ready to perform that, so she's really happy about that. She's like three different roles in that. How old thing. is how old is Stephanie? She's thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah, you know, it's really good. I mean, even if they never, ever get on a stage again, it's always good to have them do this sort of thing because it gives them a okay. certain, you know, a certain... I have wonderful memories of drama in high school. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it also gives them a certain... Uh, uh, God, I can't I can't think of words these days. i got to stop this damn... High going. school in Chicago is ducking for the gunfire, right? <laughs> Okay, all right. It gives them confidence. No, it, it, but does. it also yeah. it also gives them. A, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Confidence is yeah. It's it's poise. very important. Well, not poise, but it's it's um, uh, it's when you take on a task and and you learn to do it. It gives you no oh God. Forget it. I I'm. I, it's time for me to quit this show. I can't remember oh, words that anymore. Was my washer dryer. 
<laughs> uh, what? So, yeah. So she, yeah, so it's good because we've been trying to find something. She wanted to learn guitar and all the stuff back and forth with stuff. So I'm real, real happy for that. That's good. And the boy, and the boy just plays Valorant. That's all he does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, God, what's the word I was looking for? It's stupid. I'm, I'm just getting really dumb these days. I don't understand. The longer, the harder you try. The harder oh, the harder you, you try. Yeah, just, yeah. Just when talk you start, about yeah. something else, and it'll come to you. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but now I'm going to be thinking for the whole show what the word was I was looking for. A wild card weekend. A lot of good football games this weekend. Alex, what are you going to watch? Uh, I'm going to watch. Uh, who, who are you going to watch? I watch the Eagles. Oh, me, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I love all of them. I, I think Glenn, I think Glenn Fry is terrific. Who? Glenn Fry? The Eagles, yeah. He's dead. I get it. He's dead. Is he dead? <laughs> He's dead too. <laughs> I don't know anything about sports or music. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's really bizarre. The the eagle the Eagles, the band. Oh, I'm the word like, I was looking for was discipline. See? Ah, there you go. There you go. See, that's what we had to talk about something else. Yeah, but why did it couldn't I come up with that word? Oh, it happens to me all the time. I got to the parts yeah, house today. Yeah, but I'm not as far was, gone as you are. I went to the parts <laughs> house today for uh, transmission fluid, and I sat outside the parts house going, what the hell's the name of my transmission? For 10 minutes. Oh, really? And it was, I was going, I need I need fluid for my transmission. And it was for the, you know, the, the older car. Yeah. But I know what transmission is in it. <laughs> I couldn't for the life of me remember. I was on Google trying to look up the year and match up the car and the engine and the transmission finally found it and I went it's a 727 for Christ's sakes well I you know I did stop doing it's an airplane I always related to an airplane I did stop doing this uh, neuropathy drug for a couple of weeks and I found my memory was coming back mm-hmm. you know that my skills were getting better but now yeah. it's just it's just toast no, it just it just happens. I mean, I I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Listen, I've de- I've decided. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. I think it's time for Joe Biden to not do, give press conferences and and let people go in and give the press conferences whose topic it is. You know, like if it's transportation, send Buttigieg over there and have him give a speech. And if it's uh, if it's all about COVID, uh, let somebody from the CDC speak. But he's on every day, and he is looking more doddering. Am I right or wrong about this? By the day, yeah, and, and that's what, and that's what we didn't like about Trump, right? We're all, geez, this guy's on every single day. And well, we said when Biden gets in there, he won't have to do that. He can sort of lie back and let his yeah, work yeah, let other people talk for you. Plus the fact that every time he gets on TV, I think he loses another voter who just mm-hmm. goes, you know, the guy's doddering. Now, and I can say this because I'm doddering. Okay, you know. Don't don't let the FDA, the, the interim uh, director of the FDA speak. Yesterday, mm-hmm. she says, it's inevitable. Everybody is going to get Omicron. Yeah. And there's no data to back that up. Nowhere. Nowhere in the world is there data to back that up. But she says it. And so if it was true, why do we need to wear masks and social distance if everybody's yeah. going to get yeah, it? Just let it run its course. That's right, but it, there's no data to prove that. A lot of the doctors around the world, the, the virologists, are going nuts that she even said that. I don't even go out. How am I going to catch it? Yeah. Me yeah. yeah. Well, Me but, yeah, she's she's just totally wrong. And, you know, I can't believe that, you know, they let her say that in the news yesterday. I just... Hmm. Well, all I'm saying is, is that he gets... Uh, we've got midterm elections coming up, you know? And his approval rating is down to 33%. You know, I don't think Trump's Whoa. went below, uh, above, or below 35%. He must be doing cartwheels with that uh, voter their approval rating, 33%. <laughs> yeah. In, in history, doesn't doesn't the, when the president has all, all the Congress, same party, mm-hmm. usually midterms changes? Yeah. They always lose seats in the midterm. Right. Because people don't, I think it's that people are never satisfied with what they've got, yeah. you know? And I mean, like for instance, the, the there are two big problems we have now. One is COVID and the other one 
I mean, when we're talking about problems, is the supply chain and the food and the economy and the price of things. And all those things go back to Trump. I mean, the, the way the economy is, at least in the first year that somebody's president, isn't his fault. It goes back to the last administration who set the tone for the economy. Right. Uh, and, and so I think, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think the Democrats are going to get hurt. I think it's going to be, you know, yep. and that's going to be a field day for these these un-American assholes. I mean, they're purely un-American so far like as I'm concerned. Like the Supreme concerned. Court today. The Supreme Court today, that was... Oh, yeah, they shot down Biden's mandatory vaccine for companies that have over 100. Well, actually, it wasn't uh, um, uh, Biden's. It was actually the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, I'm going to say the OCD, uh, you know, the Department of Being Compulsive, uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, OSHA. Do you see? OSHA. You know, OSHA made that 100 and above uh, dictate. Well, it, the news says the Supreme Court shot down uh, Biden's vaccine mandate. Yeah, but did he write the mandate or did OSHA Make the mandate. I think he originally uh, asked for it. Yeah, he but uh, gave, uh, he gave OSHA authority, and then right. the authority was. Right. Okay. They said that OSHA didn't have that authority. Oh, I see. Okay, so who does? Let's give it to the person who has the authority to do it. How about, uh, how about an executive order? How about uh, you know uh, the, whoever's in charge of medical stuff in the country? Who's the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare, or something? Let let him do it. You know. Yeah somebody yeah uh but i mean i you know I'm, I'm 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 all for it you know but anyway anyway i'm trying to think what else there was that i that i had to talk about uh no no nobody died in the last 24 hours bob sager Bob the guy that you, no ronnie what's her name what ronnie ronnie uh, specter yeah 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 she went. Uh, let me see who else. Uh, well, we had a lot. Of, we've had a lot of people die in the last. You know, that's a three right there. Huh? Hey, Dolby Was Gillis died. Died. What did uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Hickman that played Dolby Gillis? When did he die? Died. When? When did oh, he? Sunday, I think. Sunday, yeah. really? Over I didn't see weekend. it anywhere. Over the oh. weekend. Sydney Poitier. Oh, Sydney Poitier. Yeah. 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 He must have been in his nineties. He, he was, was 94. 94. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody's going to die eventually. So, I mean, you know, if he go, you go at 94, boy, are you lucky? Yeah. You know, Betty White, just well, Betty right White. On New Year's Day. Yeah. Uh, or New, New Year's Eve. Eve. New Year's Eve. Yeah. Supposedly she had had a stroke like four weeks earlier. Yeah. And this was the result of that stroke you know uh but i mean i've been watching her on that hot in cleveland which is a very funny show by the way it is a funny show and and uh, i i never watched it and she was just incredible on that show here's an 88 year old woman with timing well know? they they replayed her uh saturday night live appearance last yeah. week yeah yeah which was hilarious i mean that's just I mean, there's Hilarious. an 82-year-old guy that's, that's on the show that doesn't have good timing. Well, you know what's funny? I remember when I was growing up, I was like in my teens, we got our first television set. It was a Traveler, by the way. Have you ever heard of Traveler? Mm-hmm. No, but you have? I heard of a Traveler. Have you really? TV yeah. Set? Wow. Hmm. Traveler. Black and white? Yes. Really? Anyway, we had a Traveler TV set, and, uh, you know, you would watch anything. If the test pattern came on, you would watch mm -hmm. the test pattern till the, the show went on. The first show every day on Channel 4 was Howdy Doody. <laughs> and, I was too, like for Howdy and I was too old for Howdy Doody, but I watch it anyway because it's TV. So anyway, there was this show that was syndicated called Life with Elizabeth, and it was Betty White. Hmm. And I love that show. I thought the she was terrific. She's a terrific comedian, and uh, I watched it every every uh, every week that it was on. And I, that was the first time I saw Betty White. But if I had watched television in 1939, the year I was born, 
she was doing TV back then. On a, one, uh, there were a couple of chan uh, NBC stations, I think, that were experimental um, testing out TV. In fact, TV was ready to become a big thing in 1939, and then it was kind of halted in its uh, in its uh, wasn't beginnings. The, wasn't the Traveler TV Channel One? They had a Channel One. Yeah. Right. Well, no. Here's what happened. Let, let me. I'll explain that in a second. But let me finish with. Uh, TV, um, the, the TV was going to was ready. RCA was ready to launch TV in 1939, right. and then the war hit, and so that oh. de deflected it and moved it up till after the war. And that's why in 1946, 47, TV started to appear. But she did it experimentally back in either 1938 or 1939. So she was really there from the very beginning of television. So we've lost one of the, that was when we, we lost one of the greats. You know, as a kid, we called TV television. I wonder, you know, I wonder about what time everybody just shortened it. I think I, we called it TV when we I was growing up. We always called it TV. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I remember it. Go turn the television off. Who was on the first, uh, who was on the first cover of TV Guide? I don't know who. I bet you know. Desi Arnaz Jr. Really? Wow. Yes, as he was a baby and he'd been oh, born baby, and yeah, Lucy was a big yeah. deal and he was on the front cover. And the, one of the best questions I ever asked anybody in an interview was I had Desi Arnaz Jr. in my studio. Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, let me ask you this question and I don't mean it in any mean way. I just think it's an important question to ask. How do you feel about the fact the most famous you're ever going to be is the day you were born? <laughs> because the whole nation was standing by waiting for Lucy to have a baby. And then that night when she had it, that night on CBS, they ran an episode that had been pre-made about her being rushed to the hospital and having a baby. Didn't they try and hide that she was pregnant on the Lucy show or something? No, like they that? didn't hide it. That was the significance no. of it. They didn't hide it. She, she wore a big, you know... You, you weren't, women were not allowed to show their pregnancy, so you wore moo-moos and things like that, you know. But she <laughs> wore that, and she was pregnant on the show. And, uh, but I said, how, you know, how does it feel to feel the most famous you're ever going to be is the day you were born? And he said, you know, it's true, and I, I, I've realized that. You know, it's a pretty hard act to come to follow, you know. Well... Probably the most famous I'm ever going to be is the day I was born. Really? Why? <laughs> yeah, because I ain't famous. No, I see. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. You, you were the most famous the day you were born. But what's amazing is, unlike Desi Arnaz Jr., you have maintained that for most of your life. <laughs> you know. Constant as the morning sun. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, anyway, I was watching. Spe speaking of Lucy, I was watching one of the Lucy movies where they take that trailer and drive up that big old hill. And she's like, oh, oh, what? The Somebody's printer's gone. What? What is this? Tucker. Sounds like a printer. No. Yeah, it's my wife. She started printing. Sorry, I'll mute this. Uh, look, it's coming out over on the side. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> dot matrix. It's time to get a laser. Yeah, uh, 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 Kevin. Uh, Kevin. Uh, enough uh, with uh, the dot uh, matrix already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what it sounded like. Because I could print a thing here. No, it's a. It's an. It's one of the Epson. It's a new one. It's an Epson. Wow, it's that loud. Wow. Yeah, it's because it's sitting right next to the. Yeah. Oh, there it goes again. Well, let's see if another piece of paper comes out. Yeah, we're waiting for it. Thanks. She's doing taxes. Sorry. Oh, this. And oh, yeah. Well, it is tax yeah, time. It's January. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, if you do it early, if you do it like me, I just uh, did my uh, 1958 taxes. So. Well, she's doing. <laughs> she's doing it for the uh, the band booster. She's a treasure for the band booster. So. She's Aww. trying to clean up 2015 taxes. I see. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, she took over for as a treasurer in uh, 
the guy that's been doing it for the last five years really screwed it up bad. Yeah. So that sounds familiar. Yeah, so she's kept trying to catch up, and she's buried in paper down there. Yeah, well, anyway. So our president says he's going to get out a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, tests. What do you think? Okay. Just... It's just bought a box, too, Alex. 30 um, bucks. By the way. For free. Huh? I just bought a kid, a COVID kid, for thirty bucks, and now I see he's going to give them out for free. You know, you can go to you can go to your insurance company and get paid for that. Yep. You know, I asked the lady at the pharmacy. She says we don't take the insurance card. No, that doesn't I matter. You can claim it. You, you can get reimbursed. Oh, reimbursed. reimbursed. Well, I'm going to call them up tomorrow. The president. The, the president bucks. said this. He said okay. that you can get reimbursed by your insurance companies. He made it a law that they have to reimburse you for eight. Kits a month. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. I'm getting my thirty dollars. And the insurance companies are screaming bloody murder. I get my kit. Where are you going? Uh, the coffee pot woke up or something. Yeah. Right. Right. Gee, my coffee maker doesn't work on Wi-Fi. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, make me a cup of coffee while I'm on the show. Mm -hmm. That's the ones we got. Let me see. Yeah, it. See, uh, yeah that's the one we got. I'm going to test myself, I figure. Yeah, the I 30, 30 bucks for a box of two. Wow. Yeah, exactly. 30 bucks? Yeah. 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 They were 19 yeah. bucks last like week. On the go. Uh, yeah. They were like 19 bucks last week. Everything's more expensive this week. Although, I got to tell you, we got yeah. this oven. And Marjorie uh -huh. did yesterday called them to say, take off the $30. We don't need to have it hauled away. Mm -hmm. And she said, the person there said, hold on a second, I got to check on something. And she came back, she said, the price went down on that item you're getting. Uh, we're taking $175 off. Wow. Now, wh never, when have you heard of anything getting cheaper in this economy? Never. Plus 30? It's, no, so 30 plus whatever came out to 175 you couldn't get a discount if you plugged it on the, uh, on, on the uh, Alex Bennett show? Yeah, with all the viewers I have, sure, sure. By the way, let me mention something to what viewers we have or will have when this thing gets seen on YouTube throughout the day. There is a little thing down at the bottom of the page that says subscribe. If you haven't, would you please subscribe? I hear everybody on every YouTube thing doing this plea about, you know, uh, hit the... Mash that button. Mash, mash that button. Yeah. Mash, mash right. the subscribe button. And I never say that. Okay. Don't you get money for the more people that subscribe? No, you get money for the more people that watch. So, you know. They know that. I mean, even with the measly amount of people that watch me, I mean, if I could get like ten thousand people watching each episode, I'd have. I'd be making a living. You could afford your rent. Something like that, yeah. So you know, I mean, but I mean, it, it's uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing. So you know. Anyway, so um, anybody been seeing anything good on TV? I mean, we're all cloistered in the in our apartments in which we live. Yep. And uh, uh, so, what do we do with that time? What do, what what do you do with your time, Charlie, while you're there? Well, I'm, I I actually spent a lot of time working on my umpire stuff because I'm the treasurer for the umpires, and I have to, you know, every two weeks I got to write paychecks for everybody. Oh, really? The National Umpire Society. And then I go uh, work myself. I, I was working four or five nights a week, umpiring games myself. Yeah, but what's happened to that? Are they not umpiring? Well, I'm right off now? until the middle of February. Oh, okay. Is That's that not because of it, it's starts. not because of COVID? No. No. Okay. Well, they may, the, the way COVID is ram, ramaging through Texas, they may cancel the spring season. Yeah. That's outside too, isn't it, Charlie? Yeah. yeah, it's outside. But it was outside last in 2020 when they canceled well, it. We know that Brian is passing his time with COVID by making machines that test for COVID. Right? So you, you got a job, you got work to do. Do you do it from home or do you go to the office? I go to Lodi Mondays and Tuesdays. I go Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And I'm there all day Monday, and then I come home Tuesday. Sometimes I come home Monday. That's when I, I call him the show. Yeah. I go by Len's house. But, yeah, so 
the building's uh, almost done. They're going to release it to us uh, first week of February. So we've been going in there and setting up machines and get stuff qualified, though. So we're doing, we're yeah. doing good. Yeah. You stay in the hotel overnight Monday? Yeah, my, uh, Sunday night and Monday night. So what um, do you do with your boredom, Tony? I'm, I'm always listening to books. I read a lot, actually, too, other than selling books. I read a lot. And I watch a little. I watch TV at night a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it had, like last night I watched before I called in, I watched The Eternals. Oh, I didn't I, see it yet. I, I got to tell you. Oh, yeah, I've got to watch that. Uh, I got to tell you what happened the other day. So Marjorie, oh, I can say this. She gets her marijuana from somebody in California. Okay? <laughs> so she sends him a couple hundred bucks and he sends the pot. All right. Now, in this day and age, who's going to bust you for that? It's legal in New York anyway. Right. So this time he sends her the pot and he sends her a couple of squares of marijuana infused chocolate. Alex Mm -hmm. ate all three of them at one time. Now, if you look at the instructions, it says that, you know, this one eight one eighth of the bar of the square is equal to like so many grams a pot, right? So you really only eat one if if that. There we go. <laughs> Here it comes again. Watch it come out. Uh, anyway, um, she gets it, and my God, I, I love to think that she's one of the most intelligent, smart people I know. She eats the whole goddamn square. What happens? I mean, can that really make you? Oh, I, oh! You don't know the oh, least you do of it. Know. I have a funny. Yeah, story. I, I mean, she, she was like she she was holding on to the bed for fear she was going to fall off. You know, I mean, <laughs> she <laughs> was she was she was so loopy really? that it was absolutely amazing. And oh, I was I want mind. I wanted to take her to a hospital because I oh, really? you know I don't want to take a chance that she could you can't overdose on, you on, on no on, but your anxiety can sure kick in I, I worry think. about that yeah but oh. th- then she went into the kitchen and she started throwing up in the sink and Ooh, that was good because that at least calmed yeah. down the buzz yeah. but she was high I swear to you for two days wow two days so I go, I go to a party. Yeah. In Mendocino County, at a friend's house that grows dope mm-hmm. marijuana, mm-hmm. and they they make marijuana brownies, and they just he's got so much weed, you grind it up fine in a coffee grinder, right. and dump it into the batter, and it you you can eat a, a one inch square in your highest shit. I bring home some extra brownies, mm-hmm. and my roommate's got his door open. I'm sure you can hear this story, and I and I lay the brownies out on that thing, and I and and I tell him he's he got up in the middle of the night when I came home. And he went to the bathroom, and I said, be careful, these are loaded. I go away the next day, and he ate, like, four of the brownies at one time. He was, like, stuck to his bed for two days. Okay, see? That's exactly yeah. what happened. You well, it, be careful. It, um, um, it, the fact of the matter is that, that uh, you don't, when if you're cooking, I, I learned this because I had a woman yeah. up in Mendocino who taught me how to do this. You take the marijuana that you ground up, and you don't mm-hmm. bake it into the into the brownies. Oh, these did. No, what you do, what do, you do? is you make what's called green butter. Mm. What is it? What oh. you, what you do is you cook it up, the leaves in butter, and then you strain out the leaves, and then cook with the butter. Well, the, these brownies taste uh-huh. like you're eating great chocolate brownies with lawnmower. Yeah, well, that that's lawnmower. why you don't that's why you don't do it with the uh, with the uh, seed with the the what do you call it, the leaves? Right. Uh, why you take the leaves and then you bake cut bake them in butter and the butter gets infused with THC and then you cook with the butter just like you would in any recipe. This this may be stupid, Alex. I never did any type of drug. Now, if I was that, if I was going to do, have you ever thought of starting, drug? Tony? It would be Tony, really Tony, a good thing for you. Caffeine is a what drug. What would be though? Eating the brownie chocolate with it in it, or smoking it? You think? Like, what would be more potent? 
Uh, I think it's more potent. I potent think when you when you eat it, it's more potent. Would you know you're eating it though, Mike? Well, I think uh, here's what you can do when you're smoking it. You can control the dose a little more. When oh. you're eating it, you don't you don't know exactly. You know, maybe the butter shifted to the wrong part of the I, brownie. Can you, you taste the difference, like in the candy, like automatically when you put it in your mouth? Like, would you know? <laughs> well, we have some we have some candy here that I've never tried, but they we have some like you know marijuana mints. You gotta be careful when you go into that house now. <laughs> I'll take a chocolate. I'll but marijuana, over. marijuana is now legal in the state of New it York. Is. It's just it isn't legal yeah. for sale yet. But Alex, I probably wouldn't be able to t tell the difference. You probably would be able to tell the difference if you took a little bite of it. Like, okay, there's something in here. Maybe you want to send him the candy. He calmed down a little bit. I got my coffee right now. Magic coffee, and I'm never going to sleep. <laughs> I hope you like Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I did. I tried it already. Yeah. Oh, well, there's some coming towards you. Oh, thanks, oh no, Alex. you didn't. You didn't. Yes, did. That was nice. Oh, God. You. <laughs> God, you didn't do that. It's Alan. decaf, Alex. It's hey. decaf. Oh, it's decaf. Uh -huh. oh, okay. I'll, watch, I'll make a pot when I'm watching the football games. It, it's supposed to arrive Friday. Oh, that's perfect for the weekend. I'll, I'll change from Maxwell House to Dunkin' Donuts on Saturday night. Max, you drink Maxwell House? Yeah, I sure oh. wait, wait, No, 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 no. You don't I have don't to know. go show me. <laughs> Well, you know what? I went to I went to BJ's with my sister, and I had it on sale for nine dollars. Look at that! I mean, I can. This lasts me about a month. What a waste of time that is! Yeah, really. Oh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Oh, you went to the last drop, Alex. Just well, remember. Well, is that instant? <laughs> no, it's regular. It's regular. Oh yeah, instant yeah. doesn't have the cap. To the last right. Medium roast. Oh. Isn't Maxwell House the worst kind of swill you can drink as coffee? <laughs> I think Sanka is. You're welcome. I love my coffee. Do you love your coffee? Obviously. I do. Yeah. That's the one vice I used to drink to, like, I can watch TV all night. <laughs> exactly. My brother comes in, he sees me Tony, watching my movies. Tony, if you smoke marijuana, you get high very quick. If you eat a, a marijuana infused anything, cookie, brownie, whatever, you really don't know when it's going to hit you. Yeah. Well, and how much other food you have in your stomach. And it could be you go two hours later you go, God, this didn't work and you eat more and avoid that. Oh, I take a hit I take a thing. hit I take a hit off a um, off a, a what do you call it? A, va a vapor, vaporizer oh. of pot every night to go to sleep. Tell me go to sleep. And uh, you know, it does it very nicely. But I don't I don't like getting high anymore and being awake. It just doesn't it's no fun for me. You know? For me, it's a. When I used it, it was a great sex drug. It was a great sex drug. Oh yeah. I'll tell you the best sex drug I ever had. It's ecstasy. Okay. Ecstasy. Ecstasy. You were saying was that scary, Alex? No. Ecstasy. What is ecstasy, it? ecstasy is very. It, it, any doctor will tell you it's not it's dangerous. It's a feel good drug. It's that, not it. dangerous. And I, I think I can say that safely here. It, 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 uh, I can say it's illegal, don't try it, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. But as a drug, it's not, it's not going to do it's bad. It's the love drug, the feel hey, yeah, drug. Yeah, yeah. They used start... to use, use MDMA to get stuff out of people. They would get happy and they would start telling you everything yeah, you want. Yeah, to absolutely. It's a very positive kind of drug experience. Uh, people, people on that drug usually end up buying I had some good lot. sex on it, okay? Let me put it that way. <laughs> Hey, listen, that's a theme song that's playing, the ever-familiar theme song. And so we have to thank the lovely and attractive Alan. I lie. Uh, and, and Charlie Wallace, who is lovely and attractive. And Trucker Steve, who we love seeing because we get to know that he's still okay. Uh, and uh, uh, buy more often, Steve. Yes, yeah, Steve, do it more often, okay? Uh, and uh, let me see here. Oh, yes. And uh, Tony, thank you for calling tonight and uh, d drinking coffee just a sip at a time. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. Always enjoy having you here as well as Brian Neary. Uh, and uh, you're just a lovely bunch of people. I like having you here. Uh, I say, but I say that to all my audiences. Uh, why don't you give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel, folks. There they go. They're out of here. Yeah, they're gone. 
Let me see here. Let me get rid of them for a moment here. There we go. Get rid of them. There we go. Okay. Hey, listen. Jack Bishop is next. He's going to be here with the intersection. That's next over most of the same gabnet. I'll see you again tomorrow night for our Friday night version of the Ramble. Uh, and uh, until then, uh, you know what? Well, uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know who she is. Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. By the way, wear a mask.